Have you ever tried to calculate the number of work days in Power Apps, right? There's no formula for it, right? And how would it be? Because while, you know, work days, like, all right, well, don't count Saturdays and Sundays. That's fair. But what about holidays? Oh, well, then don't count all the holidays. Okay, but do you take the same holidays as we do, right? Like we celebrate Buddy's birthday as a holiday here. We get the day off. So that would not be a work day. Do you? Probably not. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through a very flexible solution. It's different than what you think. It's not a formula. It's kind of a whole mindset shift, but it gives you complete ability to be flexible about work days and then do the calculations around that. If that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right. So we've got my little app here, right? For exclude weekends and holidays in Power Apps. And so we know that like this is just set up the normal way, but if you go number of days till, and like if we say even the number of days until next Friday and we say go, right? Like that's going to give us eight. And if we look at the calendar, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. No surprise. The problem, there's a Saturday and Sunday in there. So from a business perspective, we really wanted to get six. And so this is where people are like, oh, well, I'll just exclude Saturdays and Sundays. Awesome. But what if we jump out a little further? You know, if we go out here to July 11th, it's going to count all the weekends and it's going to count the holidays. And maybe you get Juneteenth off. Maybe you don't. Like, so, like, how does that, how does it even know to factor that in? So there's not a formulaic way to do that, right? Like this lovely little, I can't write you a form of date diff that accounts for weekends and the random holidays your company may or may not take. So how do we solve this? So credit to one of my customers years ago, they didn't give me the solution, but they were doing something I'd never seen before. And that's what put me on the solution. And so what they did was they created a database table, right? And so we're going to use SharePoint for our example. And in their table, they had just literally every date from now until the next 10 years. And then every date was just marked with a Boolean, is workday true or false? And that was all they had to do and maintain, right? So if they decided that they, you know, were observing July 4th on the 3rd because the 4th was on a Saturday, right? When they would just go in, go to July 3rd, they would change is workday to false and boom. So Every year when they got their new holiday schedule, they went ahead and updated the dates in there. So the great thing about this was then everyone in the company had one data source to reference. So the first thing I want to do is help you build that list. Because you're thinking, well, I don't want to sit there and click create items thousands of times to do that, right? And you don't want to assign it to the intern. I mean, maybe you want to assign it to the intern. It might be good work for the intern. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump over here to Excel. And so to build this, right, what we're going to do is we're going to build it in Excel, and then I'm going to show you how to create a SharePoint list from it very quickly. So we're going to go in here into Excel, and so we would just start, let's just start with 6-1, right? So 6-1-2025. So that is the date. And then hopefully you probably already know this, but we can just take this thing and uh, start to fill down. And if we just drag, right, it's going to go. And we're just going to drag it out here, I don't know. January 31st of 2026, right? So that way there's nothing going on there. But boom, just like that, it has made all the dates, okay? So there you go, that's step one. Step two, let's look at a calendar real quick. And so June 1st was a Sunday. So we're gonna go over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna type in all the days. And if you're an Excel person, you're probably thinking there's some fancy way I could have done this. I am not an Excel person, so I just got to type them in, but that's okay. All right, we're almost done. Hang on, we'll fast forward through this real quick. Okay, so then now that I've got all those, same type of thing. I'm going to highlight all of them, and then if we drag all the way down here, and then when I let go down here, it is going to knock all of those out. So it just repeated the pattern, right? Thankfully, the days of the week pattern repeats, so super easy, okay? So we got two of the three. Now for the third column, what I need to do is I'm going to go right here and I want to do a zero or a one um, for whether it's true or false, right? Or you could do true or false, but we're just going to do zeros and ones. So Sunday is a workday is zero. And then these are all workdays. And then we're back to the zero pattern. Okay. Same thing. We're going to highlight this and then we're going to drag this all the way to the bottom. All right. And we'll let go of that. Now, if it fills in the wrong number there, what you're going to do is just change this and say copy cells. And so then now it did our zero in one pattern, right? And we can just quickly check like this Saturday is a zero. Okay. So then now you would jump out here to like July 4th and be like, all right, well, July 4th, you're actually a zero. 
And then you would just need to go and find all the holidays that you have off. You know, for earlier when I was testing, I just grabbed ChatGPT and asked it what holidays. Um, so let me look real quick. So like we're gonna grab September 1st. We'll change that one to a zero. Um, October 13th, where is it at? Right there. Uh, we got November 11th. And then we've got November 27 and 28, right? And the 27th is the Thursday, that's Thanksgiving, but we you know we here we get the day after, so we're gonna do that. And then we'll go down here and we'll do the same thing around Christmas. We'll say you get Christmas, um, Christmas day and the day after Christmas off. And then you get the 31st off, you get the first off and the second off, right? So something like that, but you get the idea. You're just going to populate this thing out with whatever makes sense for you and your company. Then you want to highlight all the data. Okay. And then up here at the top, you're going to say format as table and just choose a design. Doesn't matter. Does my table have headers? It does not. So we'll say, okay. And it threw headers in there for me. And then now we're going to change these column names to holiday date, title, and is work day. And you're going to see for a set in a second why I put the day of the week in there. Um, and is work day is what they called it. So I'm just, you know, playing a little homage to them. Okay. So now that this all looks good. Now all I need to do is save this and I'm just going to save it into my um, local system here. So we'll say choose location and we'll browse. And then I'm just going to dump this on my desktop because I'm super awesome like that. So holiday list. I guess I should have called it workday list. I don't know, right? But so now we've got an Excel file with all those dates. Close that. So then now over here in SharePoint, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and we're gonna go to uh, site contents. We're gonna say new list. And then we're gonna say import from Excel. Upload the file. Look back on my desktop. So there's our holiday list. We'll say open. And so then now it's up Now, if you didn't do the table step, it'll yell at you. And then it's just easier just to recreate it and start over quite frankly. But look, we have one table named table one. Now your holiday dates come in as numbers. You don't want that. Change this to date and time. Boom. The title is the title. See, so you have to have a title column that's text in SharePoint. And so I just went ahead and used the, the day of the week for it. Like I don't actually use this in the logic. It just made SharePoint happy. If I was doing this in, uh, like SQL Server, I would just have the date and the is work day. And then for the is work day, we actually want that to be a yes, no. Unfortunately, SharePoint doesn't let you choose yes, no on the import. So what you're going to do there is you're just going to save that one for number and we're going to fix that in a second. Okay. So we'll say next there. It's like, hey, what do you want to call this? We'll just call it holiday list video, just so I remember. And then we'll say create. This will create super duper fast. All right. I lied. It took like 30 seconds, but it's still pretty fast, much faster than me typing these in here, right? Because we just did all the stuff. But so now we've got this. Now, before we leave here, I want to make one change. So we'll hit is workday. And then we'll go to column settings for that and say edit. And we're going to change the type from number to yes, no. And then we're going to say save. Now, when you do this, it's going to warn you like bad things might happen. I just made up the data. Who cares, right? So we'll say save. The good news is it understood the zeros and the ones. And so look, Sunday is not a work day. Monday is. Saturday is not. Sunday. And then like if we go down here, what do you say? July 4th was the close one I did. And so there's the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th off, right? Three-day weekend. Woohoo! Okay. So now my list is good. So now we're going to jump back to Power Apps. And we just have to do a little bit of logic here and we'll be all set, right? So we're going to go here to data. We're going to add data. Search for SharePoint. Click on SharePoint. Use my connection. We want Power Apps videos. And then if we scroll, we should have some holiday something video. I kind of remember what I did. Holiday list video. Look, I did holidays practice. I practiced. Aren't you proud? I know. We'll say connect. It's probably under my face. I forgot to move my face, if I had to guess. Okay. So now we have the list in here. So then now what we're going to do is instead of this, right? We're going to copy this though. That'd be helpful. Paste. Um, you know, we'll take this, we'll kind of move these guys up here. Let's go ahead and um, insert ourselves a gallery. Do the holiday list video. And then we need to 
change that to title, subtitle, and body just to make this easier on us. And then we'll change this one to be how it ate. And then we'll change this one to be is workday. Okay. So now we can visualize. So now at this point, we want to figure out like how do we do the math, right? So what we want is we want all the work days between now and July 11th, which we got was a 36 here. So we're going to go and we're just going to say, hey, I want to filter holiday list video where holiday is greater than or equal to today and holiday is less than or equal to our date picker, select a date. Yeah, I use the modern controls. I feel a little crazy. And I just like to say and like that. And is workday, right? That's a Boolean, true or false. And so it's only going to return the ones that are is a workday. So you can see, look, from today, well, today is the fifth. So here let's make it bigger. So that's a workday. That's a workday. Notice it skips Saturday and Sunday, right? Boom, 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 boom. Skip Saturday and Sunday. Fast forward. All right. Tuesdays or the second, the third. And then it skips the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, because it was the fourth was a holiday, fifth and sixth was whatever, right? So this is a great way to prove that you're seeing what you think you're seeing. So if you're, you're troubleshooting, I'm gonna tell you to put a gallery on the screen, right? But now that you feel like that works, hey, quick commercial break real quick, right? While we're doing this, remember that, um, you know, here at powerapps911.com, like, that's where I learned how to do all this stuff, is consulting on projects. We have mentoring services where you can get on and just help you for 30 minutes, all the way to, you know, hourly, weekly engagements to full on, we'll build your whole project. You can just sit back at the pool and, you know, drink a fruity drink. Whatever you want, we can help you with it. Just reach out to us over at powerapps911.com. We got all types of product services. We've also got training. All right, back to the video. What if I copy this and go here and say, hey, instead of all that, what if I just count the rows in that filtered data? So there's actually only 26 days or 26 work days between the two. Now, when I do this, you notice the, uh, I guess that's brown now, I don't know. It used to be a blue line, now it's brown. It's a delegation warning. The highlighted part of this formula might not work correctly on large data sets. If you do not know what Power Apps delegation is, go watch that video. It is literally irresponsible to build videos, to build videos, it's irresponsible to build videos. It's also irresponsible to build Power Apps um, if you don't know what delegation is, right? But yeah, I think videos, it's also irresponsible to make videos. Anyway, go learn about that. But if you do know what that is, then you know what's happening here is that it's only going to count the number of rows up to the delegation limit. So if you were doing this and you're like, hey, I want to you know, do this for seven years from now, well, seven years has more than 500 or even 2,000, which is the delegation limit, you're never going to get the right answer. In reality, every time I've done this for a customer, they've been counting like two days to like 15 days, right? They've never been counting years. I, I don't think you'd ever need that. If you did, you'd have to visit, you know, come up with another solution, uh, maybe a different data source. Um, but in the case of the SharePoint example, like, yes, you're going to get the warning, but you should not be trying to count further than the delegation limit. So this one would count up to 500. If you need to count up to 2000, right? You can go here, you could change this to 2000, but then that would be the maximum number of work days you could return. I don't think this is a problem, but I want to call it out because it shows up, okay? But there you go. If you understand how that works, that's the answer to your question, right? And so if you had two date pickers instead of the today, right? The start date would just be the, the other date picker. If you're pulling it from a data source, like it doesn't care. This portion here needs to be the date you want to start, whether it comes from a control, a variable, a function, a lookup, a calculation, I don't care. And then this one needs to be the date that you count to. Once again, could come from a function, a control, a math formula, I, I don't know, whatever, right? You get the idea. And then just don't forget the is workday part, um, right? And because we made it a true, false, a yes, no column in SharePoint, we can just use it as a Boolean there. We don't have to say, and is workday equals yes. Just say is workday. And once again, if you're struggling, put your formulas in this gallery so you can visualize, are you seeing what you want? Maybe like in the math, you don't want to count today, right? Maybe you want to count uh, starting from tomorrow, right? So it would just be today plus one. 
And so then that would count from today. Maybe you need to check first to see, is today a work day? Um, you know, my one customer, the very first customer I ever did this for, like the amount of logic that went in, it was about like ordering stuff and delivery date. And it depended on what day you were ordering on and what time of day it was when you were ordering it. And then when you wanted it delivered, like we did, like we had like just pages of permutations to go through to figure out, you know, could you place this order for that time frame? But it was all based off of this basic concept that you're seeing here, just, you know, adding on. So questions, comments, do you have a better solution? I'm all ears, right? Leave me comments below. Love to hear them, love to read them. Um, if we can help you build this app or any other app, you know, whether it's just a 30 minute session to you know get in there and help you fix your app where you're having a problem with this, all the way to building your whole solution from end to end, we can do that for you. Just reach out to us over at powerapps911.com. And with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.